We want to welcome those of you who have been watching the UCLA Bruins and the Stanford Cardinal. Cardinal winning that one, but uh, wasn't really decided until about the last minute and a half or so. Barry Tompkins, Dan Bellamy here at the Bank of America Arena here in Seattle. That is the game you are watching. Barnes with 27 for Stanford. Matt Lottick also helping out, especially in the first half. Stanford on fire from three-point range. Rittenauer gets that one. Yeah, speaking about being on fire, fire, how about Luke Rittenauer, who's really been on a streak of late. We know what he's done from the foul line, 59 in a row, but uh, just a tremendous all-around player. Good action there by the Ducks. They get Rittenauer free for a three. Called it a two. Going to give him a two-point goal on that one. Looked like his foot was on the line. This is Jones working on Johnson. Puts it on the floor, tries to drive on Johnson, and Johnson did, I thought, a pretty good defensive job. Okay, Barry still man-to-man. -man. Good movement here. Luke Jackson rejected that time. Might have been Shelton. Yeah, how about it? And Don't. ran ahead of everybody, but that pass too tall for him. And here come the Ducks the other way. Davis to Jackson, and a great play by Conroy. Picked him clean. What a play. Conroy, open court, good steal. Look out here. Robinson, he has it rejected. And finally, Shelton is fouled on the putback. I tell you what, I think there's a little end in action going on early. Little defense being played you also. Bet. Nothing easy going to the goal. Here's Conroy who strips Jackson. And then right back the other way. You think the Huskies have an easy one in transition. But a good defensive play at the other end. But Nate Jackson will uh, Nate get to, Nate Robinson rather will get to the foul line for uh, for two shots. Robinson's got that thing. He's got behind it. the back two or three times, but it, he does it every time. So, you know, they always say you do the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I remember years ago, this is the Harold Minor approach. Remember That's when right. he was at USC? This is the... There it is. This, the, and he does it, what, three times, the little behind the back, behind the back, behind the back, and then a couple of bounces and shoot it. Why not if it works? Absolutely. Robinson came right off the football field, stepped out of the basketball court at 19 points, his first game, and he hasn't looked back since. Here's Ridenauer, the opportunity. He's tough. Yeah, he, he is really tough. Of course, he's out of Blaine, Washington. Quite a contingency from Blaine here this afternoon. Well, we were talking to somebody sitting right behind us. There, literally half the town of Blaine is in this building today. So, any of you burglars out there who want to go to Blaine, there's a lot of empty houses. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Well, how, how about Doug Wren? We we talked about a key matchup at the start of this game. Doug Wren. Luke Jackson. And, and I think the winner of that matchup will go a long way to deciding this game. And Wren definitely needs a big afternoon. Got off to a good start. Davis off the baseline. Davis is shooting. Davis is a tremendous shooter. Davis is a streaky shooter. Close on him when he has the ball. Well, they're getting off of Bobby Jones, aren't they? They're not really defending Jones very hard when he has the ball on the exterior. They drop down and double on Wren also when he tries to post up. And Johnson jumps out on Conroy. Conroy for three. Tough shot. How about it? How about it? Davis for three. This is Conroy working on Davis all the way, and Short might have gotten him. Lorenzo Romar, even though the Ducks hammered the Huskies in the first game at Eugene, felt, look, I'd rather play against a team that's going to get it up and down, not a team that's going to stay in the half court. I thought Oregon State really maneuvered and, and hurt us with their half court offense, and they slowed the game down. Our games, our guys were just out of sync, couldn't handle it. But we like to play in transition. So he was excited coming into this game. I think a must win if he's thinking about the Pac-10 tournament. Last three on the road for uh, for the Huskies. Yeah, it could be very tough for him. And he's in a battle with UCLA. UCLA a loser today. But remember, they beat California on Thursday while Washington was losing to Oregon State. Well, I remember that UCLA has defeated the Huskies. And, uh, at the end of the year, of course, Washington, Washington State goes to Southern California. So you would think uh, right today, UCLA has the advantage. 
Pulaski's have been victimized in close games this year, but that's a sign of a young team. That was the other thing that Lorenzo was talking about. He'd, he'd rather play an up-and-down game, a game where, quite frankly, his players could just play and not so much think, because he said the half court were young, we oftentimes don't make good decisions. Yeah, a reaction game. Good defense here by the Huskies. Shot clock winding down. That's six. And a hand check on Jones. That's a tough foul with five seconds left on the shot clock. That'll bring us to our first commercial break with 15.46 remaining. And the Huskies in front of the Ducks by a pair. It's an 8-6 ball game, and we're coming back. 8-6 ball game, 15-46 remaining first half. It is the Huskies over the over the Ducks. Tomorrow, ACC Sunday Night Hoops coming back to Fox Sports Net. It'll be the Virginia Cavaliers and the 10th-ranked Wake Forest Demon Deacons. A showdown between ACC contenders. Coverage beginning tomorrow at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. It all happens right here on Fox Sports Net. Hoops in the ACC on Sunday night. There's Luke Rittenauer, who uh, started with a couple of quick hoops in this ball game. And as we said, he's got... Uh, a rooting section that was only asked for as many tickets as he could get from his teammates because he's got family, he's got friends, and literally he has half of his hometown. Good call by Conway. Conway. Said, he's falling out of bounds. Looking for help, he's and then when he couldn't get help, he said, okay, time out. Conroy had the ball all by himself, falling out of bounds. His teammates went down the floors. He said, well, I might as well call time out. Well called, I think, by Conroy. Conroy, just a sophomore at a Garfield High School in Seattle. And we talked about uh, Blaine, and uh, there on the right, that's uh, Luke Rittenauer's mom. That's Muriel Rittenauer. And uh, alongside her, other family and friends of uh, from Blaine. Of course, her husband and uh, Luke's dad, a high school coach, pretty well-known high school coach in that area. Well, Luke Rittenauer not only is one of the better guards in the country, as you look at the scoring leaders, uh, Luke is second in the conference to uh, Joe Ship. How about Ike Diagu at Arizona State? What an impact he's made. But Luke Rittenauer is just an outstanding person. He's, he's represented his school and the conference well. And he's a guy, when he got there as a freshman, Gary, you knew he was going to be a special player. Absolutely. Nice dish that time to Jones. How about that play? Conroy is off to a very nice start. Good peripheral vision to find the open play. Andre Joseph in the game now. Has that knocked out of bounds? It's going to be Oregon ball. Well, I think Andre Joseph lost it in the air and was on his way to the other end of the floor and was surprised when they said Oregon ball. He reacted he, quickly, though. He, yeah, he did react quick. <laughs> But he had his head down going the other way. I think he lost it on the way up. Now you've got a chance here, and you get a bit of a gift here if you're the Ducks. Now make the most of it. Nice move oh, across that. Just couldn't finish. Yeah, everything but the finish. He had a nice look at the basket. He might have been waiting for some contact. Never got it. This is Allen in the ball game. Stands here, takes the three. Why not? You're going to give it. I'm going to take it. Well, it's a nice backcourt combination. Quick timeout. By the how about the Huskies 13-6 to start. That's just exactly what Lorenzo would have wanted. He's got the crowd involved in the game. The crowd is on its feet here. It's senior day. There's a little bit more emotion than there might normally be, although they only have one senior in Marlon Shelton. Well, Lorenzo Romo, a very young team, and of course his team got a huge boost when Nate Robinson came off the football field. And boy, is he happy about that. Uh, the potential for him becoming the leader is very high because that's all he knows how to do. He always wants to be in the forefront. He's always giving instruction. Uh, he wants to make the big plays. You go on the road in a hostile environment, he doesn't back down at all. Uh, he wants to please the coaching staff. He wants to do what uh, we want from him. He's got pride in Husky sports, a lot of ingredients for a leader. Starting quarterback on the football team, of course, and the son of Jock Robinson, who had great success as the most valuable player, both in the Rose Bowl in his freshman season and the Orange Bowl in his senior season. Luke Rittenauer misses a three. Jackson clears it. Jensen, I think he probably clears it. Doug Wren. They're posting Wren up a lot. Well, you know, it's, it's good activity in the early offense. Get 
ran close to the goal. Might have a travel on the outside on Crosswhite. And what the Huskies are doing this afternoon, they're starting inside. Let's see if we've got some. If we don't have it, set some screens and set up our outside play. But they played flawless in the first half so far. They're going to get Crosswhite out of there right now. Now, Crosswhite, you talked about Davis being a streaky guy, so is Crosswhite. And when he gets off early, Ernie has a tendency to keep him around. Now he's made a couple of mistakes here, missing a cripple and then shuffling the feet. And so he's going to get a quick seat, and Hellquist will come on. All right, let, let's see again. If, look at that back door lob. Good, good, good job by Johnson. If the ball was higher, that would have been a goal. The ball was too low. Connor has been a very steady influence on this Washington team this year. Here's the lob over the top, and, and you have to remember you're lobbing the ball to a leaper in red. Get it high in the glass and let him finish it. Going to the basket hard was Joseph. He misses. Rent clears. The Huskies content to play Oregon's game here. They'll push it, and they'll like it. Conroy going baseline. And an offensive foul. He bumped off him with the shoulder. Looked like Conroy leaned in, and he's perplexed on the call, but there was some contact while he took that one to the goal. Okay, don't forget, Luke Rittenauer really has been the only <laughs> offense for the Ducks. Now, they need a little bit of help from some other guys. Now, Chris kicks out. Now, Joseph, Joseph defended hard by Roy. Rittenauer again. Husky's been a good defense. Yes, they are. Terrific perimeter defense. Good screen there. And Johnson, of course, finds a way to rebound the ball. He's a tremendous role player. Well, we set the offense, but again, you can see him come out and extend that defense. Rittenauer leaves it for Davis. And look at where the Huskies yeah, are. Right in the pocket they of the are. Ducks. You know what they're doing? They're playing fantastic ahead of that line there. They're playing this team like a three-point shooting team they are. Get up on them, get strong, don't give them any openings. Force them to put it on the ground and go to the basket. Rittenauer did, and Jensen stepped in front. They're going to get Rittenauer, I believe, on an offensive foul. A great job by Allen. Accept the hit, get in there, help out. Watch Allen number two. Watch him just stand in there and does a nice job to establish position as Ridnour. You don't see him go out of control very often. Made a mistake that time. Nate Robinson back into the Washington lineup. Huskies lead it by nine. Oregon really unable to get on track offensively, and that's due to tenacious defense on the part of the Huskies. Now a switch into the defense. You see the Ducks can go back in the zone, and Washington has had problems attacking the zone of late. This is dang, didn't have any trouble with that. Now get Johnson on the foul. You know, the other thing you don't see very often is a give and go against the zone defense. Normally, you pass the ball around the zone, you penetrate, you kick it back out. But this is just good passing by Day, who makes a very good bounce pass. Johnson comes over for the help a little bit late, picks up the foul, and a good effort again by the Huskies to take it in strong as Brandon Roy gets to the line. Brandon Roy, a guy, of course, who, who did not become eligible until the 16th of January, so he, he just now is, is getting game tough. Two kick fouls for Robert Johnson, so he will have to uh, sit for a while, I'm sure, maybe for the half. One on two for Roy, but Jensen with the rebound. Allen breaking it down. Well, what a cross dribble by Allen. Let's break your ankles on that cross dribble. Davis shakes everybody for three. This is off the back rim. Robinson the rebound. Here come the Huskies again. Now push it. Robinson gets into the lane. Leaves for Jensen. And Jensen will set the offense. I, I don't think Robinson's quick enough. No, I, don't. No, I, don't. I think he needs some more quickness. How about running? Look at this. And again, Joseph, as Roy took it hard to the rack. Well, Let's see the crowd here. Yeah, the, the crowd has been unbelievable. We're going to take a timeout with 11.59 left and a 12-point Husky lead. It is an 18-6 Washington run as the Huskies on a big-time roll. 
Introducing 54321. It's the only show that takes you inside the world of extreme sports every weeknight. BMX rider Kip Williamson, free surfer Chad Towersy, and the sexy Leanne Tweeden are the experts bringing you the entire world of extreme sports all in one place with breaking news, event highlights, and insider features you won't find anywhere else. 54321, weeknights at 530 and late night only on Fox Sports Net. Oregon, as you see, uh, number one in the Pac-10 conference in no less than four categories. Nate Robinson couldn't quite get the roll, and Jackson almost tipped that in. It's been a long time since the Ducks have been able to score. It's a 14. Five minutes of yes. change. It's a 14 nothing run by, uh, by the Huskies. And now Jackson back in the game, and they need it. But again, you can't say enough about how the Huskies are defending. That's a tough oh. shot by Helpless. Anderson follows it, won't go, and a rebound to Roy. That time Jackson stepped in front of the pass intended for Jensen. Jackson two on three with Rittenauer. I'll tell you, as quick as Oregon is, the Huskies are staying with them in that department. Yeah, that's, why, that's why they have great upside in this program. They're young, they're quick, and they're athletic. Jackson for three, yep. uncontested. Yeah, good luck by Jackson. Good pass, good movement. And Jackson gets his first three points of the game. Now the zone again. Allen, tough shot. Drains the three. You know, the other thing that the Huskies are doing, Barry, they're doing a great job of getting back quickly after they score because you know Oregon likes the fast break off of made and missed field goal attempts. Ridnauer missed at the elbow and Helkris missed the follow. Jackson got Helkris in the air, now he takes it. Won't go. And Jackson with the rebound, Roy fast hands it away from behind, but he got a piece of Jackson. Well, you know Curtis Allen is a very good shooter, number 20, and against the zone, they don't rotate real fast to Allen, and he gets a very good look at it. And of course, it helps if you can make shots. That will get the opposition out of the zone in a hurry, and Allen, we know, is a streaky guy. Very good and athletic can go to the basket, but also an excellent shooter. Still man to man by the Huskies. They did a great job of coming out on the Oregon and, and extending their defense and negating any open shots. But now with Robinson right on top. Long three by Davis missed everything. Jensen rebound. Yeah, I think they'll give him that one. Even though it is Davis, that was a long one. Jensen trying to get around with now. Couldn't do it. Leaves it this time for Roy. Roy double clutch and get it. Look at Robinson back pressing Ridnauer, taking the challenge. And, and I thought Nate Robinson an unselfish play. You know, normally he scores a lot of points, but this afternoon he hasn't had to. He set up other players and everybody else is involved. He had Crosswhite going hard to the basket. That wedge is in there, and that will mean a jump ball call, and the possession arrow will belong to Oregon. See, Robinson, instead of forcing it here, just pivots and under control and does a nice job just to find Brandon Roy, who, who made a beautiful completion play inside. But uh, Nate Robinson that time just had poise and patience under fire. Jackson off the inbounds, hard with the left hand, too hard, and ran to the rebound for the Washington Huskies. That'll stop the ball here. Robinson, fall away over it now, or short. Cross white clears. Rittenauer, long three. God, how, how do you like Luton Rittenauer? And how many times have you seen him do that? How about it? And Lorenzo Romar, quick timeout, because he went over in practice. Every time Rittenauer has the ball, don't leave him. Stay with him. Attack Rittenauer. Don't give him this opportunity, Jay, because he'll make you pay. And he did just that. Rittenauer's got seven of the Ducks, 12 points. 9.05 remaining here in the first half, and the Huskies leading it by 11. 
and you still have the idea that the Huskies are on the gas and Oregon still uh, kind of getting into their uniforms. And, and I think a very effective and efficient timeout for Lorenzo Romar because he can't have any breakdown defensively. I mean, it's critical to stay with Jackson, to stay with Ridenauer, to stay with Davis and not give those guys any open space at all. And now he pats his guys on the back and says, OK, we played well. Let's see if we can keep it going. Well, they have played very well so far. And they're, they're beating Oregon at Oregon's game right now. That was in the last game that was won by 25 by the Oregon Ducks, 15 points, 11 assists. Now, the other thing with Oregon, you have to be alert. They steal the ball frequently. So they're, they're excellent with stepping in the passing lane, great hands, and then they convert in the open court. So you have to be mentally alert to make sure you run your offense and make solid passes. This is Day brings Short out away from the basket. Robinson tried to back door for Jensen and the grab. I think they may get cross white inside. Looked like he was trying to front and hold at the same time. Sixth team foul by the Ducks. Now is an opportunity, Barry, to take it right at the goal, see if he can get to the line. <laughs> Robinson did that, had it swatted away. Well, you're right, they are posting up Wren a lot. Look at Doug Wren, normally the guy that goes outside, but he's been staying near the basket. He's very quick down on the block, but he's playing against a quick player, too. Jensen steps out and misses. Jackson with the rebound. Gets it ahead to Rittenauer, and Robinson reached over the top. Still, I I'm sure that it, if you if you ask Lorenzo Romar, Robinson did the right thing. Try to get the ridden hour, try to stop him from getting the ball. You pick up a foul, but you don't give him a fast break. Fourth team on the, on the Huskies. Tough task to guard ridden hour for Robinson. It gives away about six inches. Maybe even a little bit more than that. Ridden hour high off the window. It won't go, and it's going to be out of bounds to Washington. One thing that, that Robinson is doing, he's making Rittenauer earn every shot. He's an athlete. There's no, no question about it. He, he was a basketball player of the year and the football player of the year in the state of Washington. I, I know he's a defensive back, but you think you know he has the body and, and the makeup. He's a pretty good running back. Well, in fact, uh, I mean, look at him. Rick Neuheisel has talked about trying him there in the spring because uh, the cover is reasonably bare at the running back spot for the Washington Huskies looking ahead to this football season. And I think they are uh, at least going to try him in the spring at the running back spot. Got the man. Now Ridenauer, three on two if they push this. Oh, Joseph wow. to Jackson to the basket. All but the end, and Crosswhite gives him another chance. Now, how about the Ridenauer pass over? The, the, he did it nonchalant through the leg pass. Made, made a real simple bounce pass. Crosswhite on the floor to the basket. That's what Ernie Kent wants out of Crosswhite. Toughness going to the goal and completing plays. I mean, he's capable. He's a very talented player from Australia. One of many Australian players who suddenly cropped up, especially on the West Coast. Sheldon, now Conroy. Dave posting up. Robinson, two. Won't go, Ridenauer. The rebound, Joseph ahead of everybody with Conroy to the rack. But Nate Robinson took the shot, fell down, no rotation, and, and that spells disaster against Oregon. You saw the Ducks leaking out after the shot. You better have people back because that is their game. And Robinson just could not stay on his feet, and all of a sudden, the opposition had a two-on-one going to the goal. Yeah, Joseph will go to the line. Joseph has gradually come along. He came out of the, the junior college ranks, went to Austin. He started out in Stephen F. Austin, actually, but came to Oregon from Lee Junior College in Texas. And that, that's always a very difficult transition. We've talked about that many times, coming into Division I basketball, junior college. Some guys never make that adjustment. Yeah, some guys just can't make it. Others, it takes a full year. Joseph's come on strong late, of late. I mean, he's played well. You know, and it's not easy coming off the bench and then getting yourself right in the game and trying to be productive, but he's done that and has given this team a lift in the backcourt. Right. Right. Nice screen that time. Count the basket. 
And again, a great transition from offense to defense by, by Washington. How about that play? Didn't go in, but get it in the highlight reel. <laughs> that I mean, that's unbelievable. <laughs> They've had a lot of those highlight reel stuff, but never finishing. They might have to splice in a basket at the end of it. We're coming back. Huskies lead by 11 with 6.15 remaining to be played in the first half. We talked earlier about Nate Robinson and how it's uh, just in the genes, the athletic ability. His dad, Jock Robinson, remember him at University of Washington, 1982 to 1985, the most valuable player in the Rose Bowl in this game. He ran for over 200 yards. And then as a senior, was the most valuable player in the Orange Bowl. Well, here is the chip off the old Robinson block. This is Nate on a kick return, and then he made a key pick right here in the Apple Cup against Washington State, won by the Washington Huskies, uh, an outstanding athlete, as you said earlier, comes off the football field, steps onto the basketball court, goes for 19. That'll give you an idea what kind of an athlete he is. So the Huskies, who have led from the very beginning and have not looked back, Marlon Shelton back in the ball game now, for Lorenzo Romar. Double screen for Allen, but Ridenauer fights through it. Yeah, did a good job uh, to get through that, and they get a move and screen. They got Ridenauer. See, if they got Ridenauer, they get Shelton. Shelton may have been moving, and Ridenauer hit the screen. Maybe a foul on the Huskies. That's right. Now, that's the sixth team foul. Both clubs now one and one uh, from here on in. There's that double high post, and they love to run Ridenauer off the screens. Jackson spots up for three. Can't get it. Shooting goes to Jackson. Continue. Picked up by Jones. And here come the Huskies with the ball and the lead by 11. Long three by Allen. In and out. Second chance. Wren. Well, you like Wren under the goal for that reason. Explosive, effective, quick leaper inside and able to get up and get it in. Jackson got in the air, leads for cross wide for three, it won't go. Jones comes out of there for the Huskies. Huskies right now four on two. Conroy the floater. And cross wide the rebound. Ridenauer coming back the other way between three Huskies. Bodies going everywhere, and Ridenauer will go to the line. Well, the, the last a rebound inside by Wren. You saw Wren had the inside position. In fact, had to fight off his own man in order to get it up and in. But a good move by Wren just to establish himself. He and Bobby Jones were in great position that time to get that ball up and in. And you see Wren with a quick start. The three for four is what you like. Shot selection around the goal. Remember, Doug Wren, a first-team all-conference player a year ago, kind of the forgotten man this year. But uh, in fact, he wasn't even in the starting lineup for quite a while. But now he is, he is back and he's contributing. And he's doing so in the team conference. Yeah, and, and he's allowing the game to flow to him, and, and he's not just relying on his perimeter game. He's saying, look, let's go inside and see if I can help this club near the 10. And Ridenauer has made his 60th. Thank you. Count him. Count 60. Count him. In a row. Okay, that's a 60. Yeah, you heard him right. That is 61 in a row. 83, the national record. That was set earlier this year by Darnell Archie of Butler. That was at 85 before it was ended. Oh, I lost it. Did lose it. With now for three. Again. And here come the Ducks. Written now with the 11. <laughs> He's got 11 of the 20. Roy puts it on the floor, goes baseline. Almost got that to go. They'll get the foul, I think, be from behind on Andre Joseph. Yeah, everybody's been waiting for Brandon Roy, who's a very highly touted high school player, to break out. And it's taken him a while. He wasn't eligible, as you said, until January. But the guy's got, and, and Lorenzo Romar loves his talent. Very effective player. He's just got great ball skills, and he's very good around the goal. He's been struggling a bit with his shot. Uh, but, but thinks that uh, Lorenzo thinks he's got all the talent to be an effective player here at Washington for many years to come. Only a 36% free throw shooter. He missed the first. One out of two for Roy. And I think if you're Oregon right now, you've lived with the three. 
Yeah, you'd like to try to put the ball inside and see if he can something effective near the basket, unless it's Luke Whitten. Yeah, and that, was, that was a good shot. That was a very good shot. Yeah, you, you're going to live with that one all day long. Could have been traveled. I think Conroy got away with that. Allen coming underneath for Rent. What an effort by Allen. Yeah, and what a catch by Rent. Great hands by Doug Wren. Wren's got eight, Davis three. Cannot lose Oregon in transition when you score. They break quickly, and you have to identify shooters. There's Roy outside, he missed everything. Ridenauer comes away with it again. Now push it, four on three. Davis spots up, look out. Look out, here we go, look out, timeout. I think a quick T.O. <laughs> the Ducks. You know, by the way, it's a five-point game. They were down, what, about 13 a minute ago. Yeah, that's a real oh, by the way. <laughs> Ridden hour of three, and Davis with a pair of threes. Johnson back in the ball game with the two fouls for Oregon. Now, Washington has to keep his composure here. You well, know Oregon's gonna make a run. And, and I think they'll give Roy that shot. He's been struggling on the perimeter, but playing with confidence this afternoon. And as you said, 36% free throw. So you've got to go to the jump shot from the foul line. That might be the answer. Now Allen pops right out on Davis. Ridden out with Conroy right in his shorts. Joseph for three. Okay, is this like a barrage from behind the line by Oregon? I mean, they're just like, you know, let's just only look for the three. Don't look for the two. They're just going to make a bunch of threes on you. I mean, it's six. They got 16 three-point shot attempts. They made six. And the first half's not over. <laughs> you know, they got, they got time for three or four more. That's right. Runner well, you know, most of them have not been forced shots. All right, now they're going to run this high post screen. You better react quickly. You got to jump out on them. You got to jump out on them. You, if you allow Rittenauer to turn the corner, forget it. He's got that Steve Nash, I'm going to turn the corner on you, and then you're dead. You're either yeah. going to shoot the jumper and score, or I'm going to find an open play. He's got that whole Steve Nash demeanor, as a matter of fact. You know, kind of a baby face killer <laughs> to me. Yeah, the, the Dan Dickow look. Five yeah. Elquist <laughs> gets the first. A minor coming up at the half, the Pac-10 Hall of Champions honoring Kevin Johnson, KJ. Played for the Cal Bears for four years. Scores from all around the nation. All the numbers on the pictures from this one. Yeah, what, what a classy guy, Kevin Johnson. Sure is. Oh, you bet. Alquist gets them both, and it is just like that. A two-point ball game just inside two minutes remaining to be played in the first half. And Washington now looking over its shoulder. 158 remaining in the half. It is now a two-point ball game. Washington has led all the way. This week on Fox Sports Net, college basketball again taking center stage. It'll be the number one ranked Arizona Wildcats against number 18, California. A packed in showdown for first place between two national powers. Coverage beginning at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific right here on Fox Sports Net. Three-point shooting has been the hallmark for Oregon. It's brought them back from a 14-point deficit. Well, and they've shot a bundle of them, and uh, Oregon lives and dies with the three. You saw Rittenauer with one, and Davis knocks down another. Andre Joseph gets a great look from the outside, so th this is a prolific three-point shooting team. And by the way, the Huskies are four or five from three land also, so haven't shot uh, that many, but they have been productive from beyond the arc. Allen has a couple of Man-to-man -man now, switch the defense, go man-to-man, -man, try to pressure. And that shot clock now inside the tank. Doug Wren, tough shot, Johnson rejects it, Wren gets it back, four seconds. Comes up short, Davis high for the rebound. This is Lincoln, Bradley Lincoln in the ball game for the first time. He was sick the other night and did not play against uh, 
Washington State. And now Ridenour, of course, and Jackson out of the game. So, so you might look at a guy like Davis to look to be the focal point of the offense, along with Andre Joseph. Might have a foul on the backcourt. From behind, maybe Joseph. That was what you call a very short break for Luke Ridenour. He was out about 11 seconds. Well, Joseph, and, and Ernie said, well, wait a minute. What are you doing here? You yeah. need to be back in the game. Well, Joseph picked up his third foul. So that may have hastened the return of Ridenour. Curtis Allen. Curtis Allen will go to the free throw line for Washington from Tacoma. This player, oddly enough, to play at Washington from Tacoma in, in forever when he came here a couple of years ago. <laughs> 23 years between players from Tacoma here at University of Washington. Surprising. Here's Robinson with the rebound off the rejection. Conroy on the wing, spotting up for three. Got it. Great play by Robinson. Nate Robinson with the speed dribble, draw the defense. Conroy quietly has had a terrific first. Half. How about the crowd here in Seattle? Oh, it's terrific. It's great to hear this place like this. About a one second differential shot in game. So I, I think if you're the Ducks, you know, you're not all too upset to only be down five. You'd like to get the last score. I mean, you were down as much as 14 in the first half. Good job to jump out on Rittenauer. Sure was. Now two seconds. One. They got to shoot it. Great. Oh, great defense. Great effort by the Washington Huskies. Let's see. They've got 1.5. Do they have a 30 left? They've got 1.5. You can still lob it. Well, with Nate Robinson, you might be able to go in. No, yeah. no, you no, can't. Can. No, you can't. I'm only kidding. Yes. Saw T.J. Ford do it uh, from uh, Texas with about three. Well, here he goes. Here he goes. It up. It'll count. It goes. A little hard. Well, they got the shot up. I mean, one point five. I think that's admirable. Well, wait a minute. Look at him. How about how can he play split in? <laughs> Why not? Threw that one pretty good too, didn't he? Did he come back quarterback? 36-31 at the half. Washington leading all the way in front of the Oregon Ducks. We're coming back. And what a beautiful evening here in the city of Seattle, Washington. I doubt there is a more beautiful city in America when the weather is like it is today. Uh, it rained a little bit earlier, but now the sun uh, shining brightly and the uh, sun as uh, evening approaches. 36-31, Washington over Oregon. Time now to recognize in the Pac-10 Hall of Honor a great from the University of California, Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson's statistics speak for themselves. At the end of his remarkable career at Cal, he was the all-time leader in scoring, assists, and steals. He was the first player in Pac-10 history to record a triple-double. But to limit Kevin Johnson to his stats alone does not tell the story of his impact on Cal basketball. Johnson was an exceptional point guard, noted for aggressive drives to the basket and a deadly outside shot. He was a brilliant playmaker and passer who worked hard to get easy shots for his teammates. Kevin Johnson, a dynamic leader on and off the court. And continues to be so. You know, the Pac-10 uh, Pacific Life Pac-10 Men's Basketball Tournament coming to Staples Center on March 13th to the 15th. Don't, you don't want to miss out on a great college basketball tournament. You can get all seven games for only $135 for tickets, 1-800-650-0122. Or go to Ticketmaster or go online, Pac-10.org. The men's tournament from the 13th to the 15th. The women's tournament from the 7th to the 10th at the HP Pavilion down in San Jose. So plenty of tickets for the Pac-10 tournaments. Got a team trying desperately to get into that tournament, the Washington Huskies. They lead Oregon by five at the half. We welcome you back. We're at halftime here at the Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Two, a five-point lead right now for Washington over Oregon. Barry Tompkins along with Dan Belwamini. And uh, Danny, a first half in which Washington was never behind. They led it by 14. Oregon got it back to one. But credit to the Huskies. They came back. They lead it by five. Yeah, they did a good job. And certainly Washington has had good bench production. Guys that come off. Allen's made some shots. But the Huskies have played terrific basketball. I thought Conroy, Barry, really was a, was a catalyst in the first half of this game. He made some big threes, able to identify on a break and 
knocked down some shots. So I thought good balance for Washington, and they defended well in the first half. And uh, Curtis Allen, of course, with eight points off the bench. That had to help also. Conroy with the 10 to lead the game. Doug Wren, very active around the basket. He contributed eight points. All in all, a very good effort. But they're going to need a lot more of it because Luke Ridenour had to do it almost all by himself. All, all perimeter in the first half. Yeah, they took a bundle of threes. And you know you can't give Luke Ridenour any space at all in the open court. So Ridenour really brought this club back by himself. And I think if you're Ernie Kent, not too upset to only be down by five. Davis had a couple of threes and that helped. But you can see Jackson with only three points, three rebounds in the first half. They're going to need a little bit more production out of him. 20 minutes of basketball remaining from here at the Bank of America Arena in Seattle. And we're coming back. 36 to 31 ball game. Barry Tompkins, Dan Belwamini telling you all about it. And uh, I thought a very interesting first half. And I thought really credit to Washington because when Oregon did make its big run, the Huskies were able to come back and at least stretch it to a five point lead at the yeah, half. They showed good poise and patience, able to set their offense, get some goals and very effective. And you know that the, that the Oregon Ducks will make a run. Well, remember our key matchup and I, and I thought a very good one and both both of these guys need to come up big. I thought Wren got the best of it in the first half. Four of seven with the with the four uh, rebounds. And you see Luke Jackson. The one goal he makes is a three-point goal. So obviously, Luke has to get going in the second half. And he's a guy capable of putting up big numbers. Had the bad hand, Barry. Now it's healthy. And I think he's raring to go in the second half of the Oregon Ducks. Yeah, and he has no excuses. He had, he had had that hand bandaged. He took a bunch of stitches in his hand uh, down in Southern California. But uh, I believe it was against UCLA, but he's, uh, or the game before UCLA actually, but he's he's 100% now and still only one of eight from the field. So I, feel, I know he feels he's got something to prove. He went lob for Robinson that time and couldn't quite catch up with him. Now, there's not many times you'll see a lob for a 5-7 guy. But Robinson, he gets way up. Short cut off nicely by Shelton Davis. That's a two, and he's got ten to ball. Game. An excellent in-to-out play and a good move by Short to kick it out to the open player. And the Ducks come out with a much-needed score uh, to close the gap to three. And a man by Oregon. Robinson over Ridenour. A little bit short. Johnson with the rebound. Johnson picked up a couple of early fouls and uh, had to sit a good part of the first half. This is short. Going to the basket, drawing a foul on Shelton. Take a look at the numbers uh, after the first 20 minutes. Washington shooting at 48%. But look at the shooting percentage for Oregon, way down at 30%. As we said earlier, they lived and died from beyond the arc. Well, sure, you look at the points in the paint. Barry, 12 to 2 for, for the Huskies. And of course, Oregon stayed in the game, but it was only shooting 30% by the fact they made a lot of threes and they stole the ball. I mean, they were out rebounded, but that's what the three point goal will do. I mean, it'll keep you going. And when you steal it, all of a sudden it gives you multiple shots at the offensive end. And again, making a concerted effort here in the second half, it looks like to drop the ball down on the post, at least show the post. You know, when you drop the ball down on the post, now it's time for your bigger players to go ahead and complete plays because I don't think they'll double up the post if you're the Huskies. You're going to play right behind Short. You're going to play behind Johnson and see if they can make a shot. You don't want to leave anybody open on the ground. Look at Johnson get on the ground. They might get a foul there. Still a good job by Johnson. He is a hard worker. You know, he, he's another guy that was not highly touted, but he has come into this program to, to make a big impact as you see him get on the ground going after the ball and Robert Johnson did, did a terrific job. Now Johnson came over as he was sitting his third foul but uh, he came over from City College of San Francisco really known more as a football production than uh, basketball but uh, he came out of there and again very much like Andre Joseph virtually stepped into the starting lineup almost from the moment he walked on campus. You know, he's a guy too that shoots about 55 percent from the field good shot selection good rebounder hard worker just picked up his third foul so he'll sit for a, for a little while but good defender don't miss him when he's not in the game that was a bad pass by day jones wasn't looking for the ball robinson gets up on the jump shot and ran gives his team a second chance before losing it to short short to jackson jackson to davis for two missed it. been a 
tough afternoon so far from the field for Nate Robinson. He's only got the two points. He, he's missing shit. Now Rittenauer's getting off. Not going to guard him outside. That foul on Davis. The hand check on Conroy as he tried to get around him. 0 for 6, actually, from the field for Nate Robinson. So he hasn't made a field goal. He had two free throws. Uh, you get a good look at this zone here on the out of bounds. See that zone right in there trying to collapse and help out. And they run people around the screen. See if the Ducks will stay in it. Now they go back man to man. Short jumping out on Yeah, that, that was a great move by Short. Goes unnoticed, but he stopped the dribble. Right here, JD. A little spin move. Davis just picked him clean. Washington's got to be careful here. Yeah, you know, because Oregon, explosive, and they can put up points in a hurry. And Washington has to be productive at the offensive end. That's a five-second count. Jackson to the baseline, now leads to Davis. Now right now. Ten on the shot clock. Off down, shot counted! How, how do you like? How do you like right now? He's got 14 in the game. And he said, you know what, I'm in trouble here. I think I'm going to have to shoot. Let's see, can I pass it to anybody? No. Okay, I'll just get it up there in a sweet spot. It might go in. It did, and Robinson's guilty of the foul. And Robinson did absolutely everything he could. Now he really has mastered the art of sort of jumping into his defender and drawing a foul. Ducks lead it for the first time in the ball game. And now the zone, so they switch the defense again. Recognized, very important here for the Huskies. See him hopping and jumping in, in that zone and trying to ball hard. Robinson with a good look. Still won't go. And ridden out of the rebound. That's 0 for 7 for the field. Ridden out back and out. Only back near the timeline. Jackson for three. Uh, look out. Uh, just a wide open shot. You, you don't see that very often. Don't forget, it was one of eight in the first half. And Jones going baseline on Anderson, following Anderson. Now, Renzo Walmart has said, look, you know, there are times we just don't score. I mean, we, we go into like a five minute. You know, dead situation where we cannot get a point, and right now they're heading that way. They haven't scored in the second half. Cross right coming back into the Oregon lineup. Anderson, after a cameo appearance, will leave. Elkquist will also come back, and Short will leave. So it moves cross right to the four, Elkquist to the five. Ducks look like they're man-to-man -man on the out-of-bounds, so execute important here for uh, for the Huskies. Good execution, and they still oh, almost didn't get it in. Uh, they call timeout. And they're actually not badly called because, as you said, it was down to the last finger. 16-41 remaining to be played in the ball game, and the Oregon Ducks, for the first time in the game, have the lead by one, 37-36. Leads it by 116.41 remaining. Let me tell you about a show that that little girl would probably really like. Introducing 54321. It's the only show that takes you inside the world of extreme sports every weeknight. You got BMX rider Kip Williamson, your free surfer Chad Towersy, and of course you got your sexy Leanne Tweed. Those are the experts who bring in the entire world of extreme sports all in one place. You won't find this stuff anywhere else. 54321, weeknights at 530 and late night right here on Fox Sports Net. One point lead, Oregon, Washington with the ball. Ducks trying to turn it up defensively, done a very good job in the second half. Shot clock is now about 15. And not able to get anything easy. Day with a good look. Well done, I thought, the Huskies that time. And a good move by Wren, unselfish to draw the defense and find the open player.
to him on the Huskies. And he credit George with that, and Ridenour picks his pocket. There's that opportunity three again. He missed it. Tried to follow his own shot, couldn't do it. Finally, Conroy gets a hand on it. It's going to be out of bounds to Washington. Well, Rittenauer had everything all figured out, just couldn't finish it. The Huskies will have the ball and the lead when we come back. 38-37, Washington. Huskies lead it by 115-51 remaining. Remember, these two hooked up in the Pac-10 Conference Tournament last year. Yeah, and, and I thought last year, don't forget, Washington gave Oregon all they wanted. Uh, uh, Doug Wren, who was, you know, had, had a great start, and Ernie Kent, you know, got his guys uh, finally going as Rittenauer started to make some shots. But I thought Washington played uh, Oregon strong. So this rivalry can go back, and these two clubs have always uh, hooked up and played good basketball games. Uh, obviously, the first time they, uh, uh, Ernie Kent won in Eugene, won by 25. But uh, you remember that uh, 2002 Pac-10 tournament was an 86-64 game. But, but I thought very competitive for the first half. Yeah, two Ernie's wearing. Yeah, very good. Er suit. Ernie and Paul Graham get my sartorial Paul, splendor Paul award. Graham, Paul, 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 Paul Graham's won. Paul Graham is ridiculous. Sartorial splendor, number one, Paul Graham, Washington State. Case closed. Jones for three. Big shot. That gets the crowd going again. Jackson tried to leave for Hellcrest and a grab from behind on Doug Rent. So Doug Rent picks up his third personal foul and will take a seat. Check that. That's his first personal foul, but he still will take a seat. And you saw that graphic uh, for the Huskies, six of eight from three point range this afternoon. Ridden a nice job to save that miss. Jackson, again, a good look. This time he doesn't take it. Drifts in, leaves for help. Just wrap around White, or rather, uh, cross White, and a foul against Jackson. Jackson's having one of those afternoons. As he makes up, see, normally he'd shoot that, but he's like one of nine. He's saying, well, maybe I don't want to look for it. I'm going to try to penetrate. They slid over and got the call. Jackson with the foul. But, but I think when he's in rhythm, he's taking that outside shot. He's not putting the ball on the ground. So the Huskies now with a chance to increase. They lead it by four. Twelve on the shot clock, now ten on the shot clock. Conroy back on the floor. Long three, Conroy. And a nice job by Jones to get a hand on it, and they're going to say out of bounds, Oregon. Off of Jones. See if they run the double high, and they like to run Rittenauer off of screens. You look at the field goal percentage, the Ducks, I mean, they're only shooting 30% from the field. They made some threes. Haven't made any in the second half that I can recall, but in the first half, made six of them. Davis missed the J. And these teams played in Eugene, Barry. The Ducks had 14 threes in the game. They were 14 of 27 from three-point range in the first meeting. Haven't even shot too many threes here in the second half. Only one. They've tried to jam it inside in the second half. Or take it inside, if not jam it inside. Conroy will go to the line for two. Conroy shooting two. Yeah, very nice line for Will Conroy. I thought very productive first half. And Clearly a guy that, that's come into this game with upside and, and, and felt that this was so important for his team to, to get off with a win. Did not play well against Oregon State, but, you know, let's give Oregon State credit. They came in here, and Jay John's team, we know Richie's a good player, Jackson's a good player, Nash is a guy that can score, and they're a terrific half-court team. And they've given a lot of clubs trouble. They, they were very good in the Bay Area, couldn't come up with a win. And Washington, conversely, they come home, 
Overtime loss to Arizona. Overtime loss to Arizona State. So they hit the wall uh, against the, against the uh, against Oregon State. Crosswhite with the Ducks' first three of the second half brings it back to within two. Allen long three. Yeah, quick shot. Yeah, short with the rebound for Oregon. Good job for the white jerseys to get back and set the defense. Not give the Ducks that transition opportunity jumper. This guy will jump out on Crosswhite when he gets the ball in the perimeter. Now Lindauer now at the baseline behind the back of Jackson. Back it out and reset with 15 on the shot clock. This is like your end of the 35 second clock play right here. Crosswhite again. Got another three. Yeah, it's Rittenauer and Crosswhite, and you've got to respect Crosswhite. He can shoot the tray. Good dish by Rittenauer. Conroy, baseline again. Now Jones for three. Had one earlier. Can't get this one. Jackson with a rebound. Of course, you said just about a minute ago that Oregon had not shot many threes. <laughs> In the second half, and then Crosswhite bombs one. They get a couple of threes in, in succession. Good play by oh, Allen. Play. Just out cooked everyone. Look out here, watch the finish. Easy off the window. Nice play. Glad by to Allen. see him do that. Yeah. yeah. Good, great play by Allen. That puts the dogs back in front by one. More importantly, it involves the crowd. Help that time. Ridnar finally shakes everybody, tries to three can't get it. Jackson, offensive rebound, his sixth rebound. Good job by Jones defensively. Ridnar spots up for two, can't get it. And here come the Huskies again. And it bounces off of Conroy's foot. Jones and Conroy weren't sure who was going to handle that ball. And finally, it bounced off Conroy's foot out of bounds to Oregon when we come back. Washington by one. Welcome back, a one-point lead for the Washington Huskies with 11.50 remaining to be played in the game. This weekend, NASCAR shifting over to the Rock for another full weekend of racing action. Tomorrow, you can start your day with NASCAR this morning on Fox Sports Net. That's followed by the world's best drivers going bumper to bumper at the Rock in the Subway 400. NASCAR returning this weekend across the Fox networks. Rockingham, one of the great old NASCAR tracks. Well, there you are. I couldn't read it, but there you are. Anthony Washington fans there. And, uh, Anthony, of course, not able to suit up. He's got a bad foot. Yeah, they're hoping maybe they can get Washington back if they can make the Pac-10 tournament to be back at that time. Good ticket. Wow, it sure not, was. See, now that may get Jackson off. They get Jackson look Jackson looked like he was right there. Jackson only five in the ball game, and now the Ducks lead by one. You're having a bad afternoon. One thing you can do is rebound the ball, try to get second and third out. Well, how about there's one about, right there? There's one. <laughs> now, Robinson at 5'7, he's just going to go in an offensive rebound and then stick it back in. First basket of the ball game for Robinson. He's got four points, but he's been a factor. It is a factor on that play. Harassing Ridenauer, getting his hand in the way. And, and being a guy that, that can disrupt in the midcourt and, and causes that turnover. So the Huskies with the lead and with the ball. The old adage, Barry, you can always play defense. If you're not having a good offensive game, you can play D and rebound the ball. That runs on the Roy getting baseline, got too far underneath. Now Robinson still can't find the lane from outside. Short for the rebound. Rittenauer, cross wide ahead of everybody, but he's going to back it out. Nice catch by Crosswhite. It's a, it's a good save by Ian Crosswhite not to travel and kick it back out just to give his club a chance to reset. Those are the Team fouls four and five, so the Ducks with five team fouls. Huskies four. Short drops it, now picks it up, and then comes right up and bodies it. 
cross right by the man in the air. Now the easy J, but it won't go. Evan Robinson up above short to get it. Nice pass. And Roy with the finish on one. How about it? How about Nate Robinson and Roy on the completion? You said great pass, and it was, but I thought Roy made an outstanding catch to finish the play. Look at the vision. Look at him looking. He's got his eyes ahead. See Roy make that double bounce to save it and finalize going to the goal. Terrific play in, in transition. Not easily done there. You know, he made it look easy. That was a very tough play by Brandon Roy. And if he came down on one foot, it would have been a travel. He came to that jump stop and allowed himself then just to go up and make the shot. And more and, and importantly now, rhythm gets to the foul line. You said 36% free throw shooter, but he's made uh, a couple of free throws this afternoon. Big sequence there for the Huskies, and they lead by four. 950 left in the ballgame. Again, got a hand on the ball, short leaves for Jackson. Just cannot leave Jackson alone. Jackson's a guy, you stay near him, he's active. Robinson doing a good defensive job on Rittenauer, not letting him catch the ball. Got to go the other way, that's the other way. They're automatic. They don't like the call, but it's automatic. It it's is. a good call. It's the right call, absolutely. First foul on Jensen, but he jumped right in to the defender. Yeah, th this is the, the last play down the floor, the terrific feed that time from Short. Jackson cutting right down the middle. And of course, you nearly get the deflection, so instinctively, you start going the other way if you're washing in. And then, of course, Oregon got it back and scored. Look at that back there. Yeah. Oh, I didn't like her. It's about the ball. Wow. Was, Davis the reverse. Was, was that beautiful? When you overplay, back cut to the goal. Roy says, I'll take this, and can't get it. Cross right, let him take it. Robinson picks it up and puts it in. How does he do the ball? I don't know how he does it. You know, Nate Robinson has not shot the ball on the outside at all, but he's come up with two big key offensive rebounds. He just missed a shot at the other end, but Jackson with another offensive rebound. Leaves behind the back. Robinson got a hand on that one also. Davis tried to save. It's going to be Oregon ball. Day, the crowd here. This, this has developed. I didn't think this could happen in Seattle, but, but it has developed into a tremendous basketball environment. I mean, they are right on the floor, everybody in purple, and they are into this game. Absolutely. And we should mention, too, as Lincoln comes into the game, I'm sorry, take a look at this replay, and I'll tell you after. Robinson yep. somehow got in there, got the ball, and got it up. Got it up and in and uh, had the great hands. And, of course, you know, he's got hops inside. He can get off the ground. Start to say, we should mention, Andre Joseph has not been in the ball game in the second half. He's at the far end of the Oregon bench. And Brandon Lincoln has been brought in. And he, he was saying that uh, Joseph was doing a little whooping on, on the bench. We don't know what yeah. it's all about. But one thing we do know is he has not been in the ball yeah, game. Yeah, and there may, may be some issues you don't know. And a lot of things can happen. And uh, sometimes a uh, coach-player situation, you do something, everybody overreacts. But you're right, he's not in the game. So now Robinson will set things up here. Of course, Ducks try to give the appearance of two threes on or not, they're man to man. And Ren again, here's Ren by the goal. And Roy, the opportunist. Roy with 11 points, and it seems that every time the Huskies have really needed a basket, Roy has been there to deliver. I'll tell you, I think the crowd has been worth four or five points this afternoon. I mean, they, they have been uh, that boisterous in this arena. And every time they, that the that Oregon's made a run, the crowds come back. Got to be careful here. Don't swipe at the ball. Yeah, which you don't did. need a technical like what happened in the Arizona game. But, you know, I thought Mark, Mark actually did a really good thing there. Went over to Red after he didn't tee him. And basically, I'm sure what he said is, don't let me see you do that again. Washington leads it by four with 7.43 remaining to be played. Once again, let's take a look at the standings in the Pac-10. Arizona still leads it. Stanford has now moved into undisputed possession of second place, at least for the moment. Look at Arizona State at 9-4. Remember, Arizona and Arizona State playing tonight. 
down in Tempe, Arizona. Those of you on uh, Fox Sports Arizona will be able to see that game live from Tempe, and I think that's going to be a terrific ball. Yeah, game. I think a great game. Don't forget, Arizona State made a big comeback on Arizona in Tucson uh, to make the game close, and we know Ike Diagu, a tough guy to handle inside, and we know that Arizona State team's a very good basketball team. If they can get guard play, uh, they're going to be tough to handle at home. they got a big crowd down there, so it should be an exciting atmosphere tonight in Tempe. They're going to get Jones that time in the hand to the face of Jackson. Interesting that neither Jackson nor Robinson are shooting the ball well. They're contributing very much offensively, and yet they're a vital factor in the game. Well, they're a real, they're a vital factor. Well, look, Jackson, three of twelve. Now remember, he's one of eight in the first half. A little bit better in the second half. Nate Jackson, two of ten uh, from the field. But both of those were putbacks uh, inside. So uh, a great effort uh, by both uh, of those guys to be productive inside. Nate Robinson, just a, a nice effort at, at the two of ten area. But uh, we know Robinson has really been good uh, leading this club and rebounding the ball. Jackson with a really nice play there. Followed his own miss that time. And now we're going to get a grab foul. Let's see who they got. Jackson knew that shot was going to miss. Followed, went right to the spot that he thought the ball was going to come. Jones. If, it, if it's on Jones, it's his fourth. He will come out, and Wren will come back. Brandon Lincoln at the free throw line. Brandon is, is a, a freshman out of the Portland area, played at Jefferson High School, and. Ernie Kent thinks here's another guy that's, you know, going to add into the mix uh, even this year, but, but most definitely next year. And Ernie's saying, okay, let's play smart. Let's not make any mistakes. Let's play good position. Yeah, he was uh, talking about Brandon Lincoln. He was in that backcourt with uh, Aaron Miles good. and Michael Lee, both of whom went off to Kansas. Good backcourt. I'll say. Good, good trio. <laughs> the trio of guys. <laughs> Probably a very successful high school team. I would think so. So Roy driving that crosswalk. He draws a crowd. Gets it out of it. Well, they are jumping out on those screens, aren't they? The sure Ducks are. have did a good job. Both clubs really have come out on the screens. Ran had a good look that time, but couldn't get the shot down. Short, almost through the way. 53-52. Huskies over the Ducks. Ducks with the ball. Inside of seven minutes remaining. Well, you see what Robinson does every time the ball is shot and Oregon gets it. What does Nate Robinson do? He runs right at Rittenauer. He just runs right at him and tries to stay close to him. Rittenauer had a good look that time, but Roy came down with it off the miss. Conroy driving on Lincoln. Floated with the right hand. Uh -huh. Followed by Day. Wow. Get a body on Day. Well, that's what Day can bring to the table. He's got four points in the game, but he is a guy that can do damage at the offensive end. Big time leaper, screen him out. There's Crosswhite working on Rand and gets it. Just want to run around him. You know, you know what you like about Cross White? He's gaining in confidence. Very proactive with the ball. Put it on the ground, left-handed. I mean, he is he's a multi-dimensional player, and he's a good one. He's a guy that will, I think, have an outstanding career at Oregon. Yeah, gonna get a lot better, I think. This is his freshman year. He redshirted last year. Robinson follow away. And a follow one. You know the old adage. Your best offense is a miss shot. You know, when that happens, the opposition's in trouble. <laughs> and the Huskies have just powered the ball in the last two times down. Gannon wakes the crowd up. Jackson lost everybody. But no basket. No basket. Anytime, look at, see, Short comes for the help, and all of a sudden, there's no block out at all. 
and Day goes right to the goal. Schwartz got to be careful. Don't help too much. You got to get back and make sure your man doesn't directly go for that rebound or someone has to rotate in there and help out. And then the next time down, it was Roy. Same thing virtually. It's amazing, too, that Nate Robinson who cannot buy a goal. And we've seen him play very quite a bit, and he's a guy that normally shoots the ball effectively, and he can make the perimeter shot. I mean, he's helped this club in many ways, but now Rittenauer is just not defending him on the outside. He's saying, look, keep shooting. Great Great steal. Steal. That was an excellent steal by Jackson. Jackson doing all those little things in this game, even though he's not scoring. And Rittenauer, we should say, is, has gone rather quiet. He's had three in the second half. And that, I think it was a three-point shot early in the second half. Well, I think exceptional def defense again by Nate Robinson. Look at Robinson. Look where he is. I mean, he's just trying to keep the ball away from Rittenauer. Stay with him. Face guard him. Do anything you can. Don't let Rittenauer touch the ball. That's his job. Come on, brother. Oh, Robinson driving baseline. Oh, yeah. Cut the basket. Oh, how do you like it? Look at Nate. I can take it to the goal. Robinson, how about that play? That's a pretty quick first step, I would yeah, say, too. Yeah, I would say that's quick. Yeah, I would say that's like lightning. To watch this move. Watch this quickness. Boom. Just take it in, and then you can't forget it. Once he brings it to the middle, he'll put the wrap around at the foul line. He entertains the crowd, I'll say that. And he's going to be around here for another three years after this. Can't convert the three-point play. And the Huskies lead it by five. 440 remaining. What a difference, you, you see, now that's, a, that's an unbelievable graphic right there, 28-10 points in the paint. Jackson for three with a good look, and he still can't find it. I thought an unselfish play by Davis, they ran that back door play for Davis again, he got cut off, and he dished to Jackson with a wide open look for three. I thought Jackson had to come on the second half for the, for the Ducks to win, I and mean, I don't think Rick Mallory can do it all by himself. Wow, look at the pick oh, by, oh, I thought he got it. <laughs> Robinson, he's safe. I think the crowd likes Robinson. What yeah. do you think? Yeah. I think it's a two-way street, too. It is a two-way street. Now, Rittenauer from behind, really, you know, he, he did get leather, but, he, but he, you're safe. You got it. You're right. You're not out. You're safe. But Rittenauer got tangled up with uh, with Robinson's feet. Now, that's where the foul occurred. One and one. Still not a double bonus. Robinson can't get that either. Well, Washington has played one close game after yeah, another. Everyone. And, and they haven't had the best of it either in, in close games. You said earlier, lost the two overtime games to the Arizona schools. Played them both really well. Nice dish that time. Right now, across right, he could finish. Curtis Allen coming the other way, all the way to the 10. Taking a page out of Oregon's book. I think Allen's playing exceptionally well. He's got 12 in the game. Nice transition. A seven point lead, and Rittenauer puts it off the window too hard, and we're going to get a foul grab on Rem. Ducks trying to have their best starting 25 game record since 1938 with a win here today. But that win may be very elusive. Now, defending. Pac-10 champions, the Oregon Ducks. But remember last year, they did come down the stretch in, in terrific style. I mean, they just won every game winning the Pac-10 championship and on their way to the Elite Eight before losing to Kansas. Robert Johnson has not scored tonight, but that's not his job on this team. Well, he still has to score. And Jensen with a rebound. Now, those are free throws, though, that Oregon needed. I mean, they're, they're in a situation, you know, the clock not yet a factor, but down seven in the second half, a little over three minutes to go. Now you're in a position of your Oregon. you got to put some defensive stops. You can't uh, allow open shots to go down like that. Allen, how about Allen has been spectacular. Off the bench with 15. 
and it is a 10-point ball game, and Ernie Kent wants a timeout just to try to stop the bleeding here. He's got three minutes remaining, and listen to this crowd here at the Bank of America Arena. They've got bodies in seats, and they have been nothing if not an entertaining team that doesn't show in a one-loss record, eight up and 15 down and three and 11 in the Pac-10. But they have been competitive. Remember, we're talking about close games. They lost in overtime to Gonzaga. Then, in recent weeks, when they actually have gotten better, they lost in overtime to Arizona. They lost in overtime to Arizona State. They lost at Stanford by nine. Then they played at Berkeley, and they had Cal beat. They were ahead by one, with I think it was 14 seconds remaining, only to lose that one by five, 58-53. And then they were flat against Oregon State, the only game that they have been flat in a long time. So they're playing close, they're doing everything, they're just not winning ball games. Well, this week on Fox Sports Net, college basketball again will take center stage. Number one, Arizona against 18th ranked California. That takes place on Thursday night at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific right here on Fox Sports Net. And those of you, uh, as we said earlier, Watching on uh, Fox Sports Arizona, you'll be able to see that great rivalry game, Arizona and Arizona State, right after this. Crosswhite did a good job to throw that up and draw the foul. He'll have two. Trying to stop a 9-0 UW run. And, and now the clock is a factor, and the Ducks are in trouble. I mean, uh, you're, you're down 10 under three minutes to go as, as Crosswhite finds a way to get to the line for a couple of free throws. And now if you're Oregon, you have to be thinking if you can get these free throws down, set your defense, you have to extend and, and get after the Huskies. Hope you can get this rep that could cause a couple of turnovers. Look on Ernie Kent's face, told you everything you need to know about the desperation that faces his team right now. Ross White gets them both. Makes it an eight-point game. We've got a timeout. 2.55 remaining. The Huskies will have the ball trying to protect an eight-point lead. We're coming back. 64-56, Washington by eight. 2.55 remaining to be played. Let's take a look at our game reset. Tell you about the timeouts and the foul situations. Double bonus situation will prevail for both teams. Three timeouts left for Oregon and two for the Washington Huskies. 2.55 showing on the clock. I think if you're Oregon right now, I mean, you might not want to foul on this possession. You're down eight inside of three minutes. As you said, it's a double bonus. It, it is uh, sometimes very appealing if a guy gets the ball like a Wren, who's not a good free throw shooter at about 58%, or a guy like Brandon Roy, who's not a very good free throw shooter, to go after him. But I think if you're the Ducks now, try to get a steal or a turnover. You still have time. So they're about trying to well, pressure the ball it. again. They got has got a freebie. Now you play defense. You don't foul. What a play by Ridnour. Well, that's why he's an All-American. I mean, come on. I mean, the guy, that's a big play. Trying to stop the ball. Nobody's been able to do it. And they'll get a foul. Did they get Johnson or did they get Crossway? I think Nate Robinson just said, you know, the last time we were a bit conservative bringing the ball down the floor. And we need to make something happen. We can't just withhold the ball. And now you're looking at a, at a six-point game, a two-possession game, and a good move by uh, by Nate Robinson just to bring it in there and see if we can make something happen. Call a foul on Johnson. That'll be his fourth foul. Robinson has struggled a bit at the free throw line, two of four, now three of five. And you got to remember, Robinson's like a 78% free throw shooter. So, you know, if you're Lorenzo Romar, th this is the guy you want to the line. I mean, you'd like to have Curtis Allen if you had your druthers because he's your best free throw shooter. But uh, Nate Robinson has been very productive from the line. Gets them both. Back to an eight-point game. And a timeout with 2.29 remaining to be played. Huskies lead it by eight. Now, well, Oregon has all its three-point shooters in the game. Four of the five on the floor for the Ducks can step out and shoot the yeah, three. And it's no accident right now that Ernie Kent wants to regroup his team. He feels like this is the critical possession of the game, and I'm sure they're going to be looking Trey coming down the floor, set up one of their players, let's run some motion, see if we knock down a three. And, and, and that said, of course, only uh, two three-point shots in the second half for the Oregon Ducks after six in the first half. 
Pac-10 basketball on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you today by Infinity, makers of innovative high-performance premium vehicles. Night started to set in on the city of Seattle, Washington, and uh, kind of broken skies. Rained a little bit earlier today, and then when we got here, beautiful, clear, sunny conditions, a little Good. cool. And it's great to see this building. L look at the, look at how you sold out, could not get a ticket for this game. Imagine if the Huskies turn it around big time and start winning. I mean, this will be the toughest ticket in town. I, I think so, too. Already pretty tough. I mean, they, you saw that graphic earlier. Attendance has increased 15%. Now, the Ducks are in uh, one of those situations where they cannot afford too many empty possessions. Davis for three. Yeah, they need that one. And they got, got it. Timeout. Take a timeout. Quick timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. Now yep. it's a five-point game. Great call. Plenty of time, too. Plenty of time. Yeah, you know, and give a salute to Ernie Kent and, and the coaching staff. Take that timeout. That was a big, big possession of the game. He knew they needed a three. They don't score there. Then all of a sudden, you're in big trouble. Now you close at the five. Now you can press, extend. Now you may want to take a strategic foul. If you think a guy has the ball who's like a 50% free throw shooter, you may want to go after it. Well, I, I thought, too, the other thing about that is that Davis was in a rhythm when he first made the catch. Then he juggled the ball a little bit, got himself out of rhythm, and still made the three. Barry, that's what great shooters do. That's right. <laughs> you know what? They I, can fumble, they can recover, because they're so confident they can still get it in. So don't go anywhere yet. A lot stranger things have happened than to come back from six down with 215, especially an Ernie Kent coach team. And not only that, you know, when, you, when you've lost a lot of close games like Washington, and I'm not inferring that this is the case with them necessarily, but oftentimes teams will sit around, sit around, wait for something bad to happen rather than wait for something good to happen. Yeah, Lorenzo Wilmar, you know, they want to get the real good free throw shooters uh, on the floor in case there's any kind of a strategic foul. How about this? Take it in, don't score. And no foul, and they released Davis that time, but they didn't see him. Now here comes Rittenauer, Jackson. Spots up, now he leaves for Rittenauer. Rittenauer so sees a lane to the basket. Trying to give it up for Davis out of bounds. A rare mistake by Luke Rittenauer. Take a look at our Whataburger game summary. Oregon only shot at 30% in the first half, while Washington shot it at 48%, and Washington just clobbering Oregon in the paint, which is surprising. Yeah, it is surprising. Of course, Rittenauer with the 17 and five, and Curtis Allen really has been a difference maker this afternoon, coming off the bench and sparking this team. Good job to get up the middle, stop and shoot it. Conroy all the way to the basket. And a steal, almost. Rittenauer trying to create here. Blocked beautifully by Jones. Rittenauer gets it back. And it is fouled by Jones. That'll be his fifth. And Jones has to be careful. Raise your hand, walk off the floor. Don't give the official a chance to call a tee. It would be devastating right now for the Huskies. And, and that, of course, happened in the loss to Arizona. A technical foul was called in a potential three-point play by Luke Walton, and it wound up costing Arizona the basketball, or rather costing Washington the basketball game. Want to remind you, those of you watching on Fox Sports Arizona, we're going to take you from this game to your game. That is, of course, the Arizona-Arizona State game. So those of you on Fox Sports Arizona, you will be leaving us in just a moment. One thirty-one left here, 68-61. Luke Rittenauer will go to the line. And Rittenauer, of course, 61 in a row. Double bonus. Oh, he he missed, it. missed it. Well, how do you like that? Well, so much for a national record, but more importantly, what does it do in this game? One in a row. Start another streak. Exactly. But still a two possession yep. game. Still a two possession game. Very important here. Oh, good job to steal again. Did they get the possession there? Oh, no. I think they're going to say that Robinson might have called a timeout. The arrow was theirs. Heads up play by Robinson. And he barely had possession before Rittenauer jumped on the ground. Uh, and it would have been possession arrow Oregon. 
Petty, Nate Robinson with the timeout call. Arizona, of course, uh, top the Pac-10. Stanford uh, having won today at UCLA and swept the Southern California schools. Swept them uh, home and away, actually. Now 12 and three, undisputed possession of second place. You know, we've been talking about good teams in the Pac-10 conference. Easy to overlook Stanford. What a job Mike Montgomery yeah, done has done job. there. Remember, he lost three players to the NBA. Yeah, yeah, I know. Mike has done a beautiful job, and, and you know, guys have emerged in his program, and uh, we saw it this afternoon. We were commenting on it. You know, Justin Davis has made rapid improvement, uh, and, and they've had so many guys. Uh, terrific backcourt play, so uh, Mike Montgomery has done a beautiful job. Uh, how, about, how, about, how about Matt? How about Lodic. Lodic, you know, in my mind, has got to be the most improved player in the Pac-10 Conference from last year to this year. He's like automatic from outside now. I mean, he's looking for his three. So he and Barnes are a dynamic backcourt combination uh, for the card. I think they really are. And then, of course, you have the athleticism of Childress and, and Justin Davis since uh, coming back to virtually 100% from that uh, knee problem that he had earlier in the year. I mean, they got four players who can make a lot of noise. And they got a guy in the middle when he's out of foul trouble. Rob Little is very effective. Speaking of making a lot of noise, we want to thank the executive producer of Pac-10 Basketball here on Fox, Bill Borson, the coordinating producers, Gary Garcia and Roy Hamilton. Today's game produced by Dennis Kirkpatrick and directed by Lucinda Owens. Vice President of Remote Operations, Andrea Berry, and the Director of Remote Operations, Debbie Kilmart. Inbound to Robinson. Right, that's just a great out of bounds by, by the Huskies. See if they get a call there. And they they did. How about and Robinson? Nate Robinson. How about it? How do you like Nate Robinson? On an afternoon where he is not productive from the perimeter, does all the little things to help his team solidify a win. It's not over yet, but they're, they're in a real good position. Good backcourt. Back cut to the goal that time by Robinson. Now, heads up, look at him, get right back in the play, not thinking about the score, thinking about the defense. And he's the emotional leader of this team also. Going to get a foul on Jackson, I think. Yep. And that's going to put uh, one of the best free throw shooters in the conference at the line in Justin Allen. Curtis Allen, I beg your pardon. Curtis Allen, well, you have to think right now with Allen at the line, and, you know, almost automatic from the foul line. The Huskies can open up a 10-point lead with a minute and 18, and if you're Oregon, your mindset now, three-point goal every time down the floor, you've got to be looking for it. And I think the Huskies right now line up ahead of that line. Give them a two, but defend, get way on top of the line. Don't let them shoot a three. Get everybody out there. That's right. A three in traffic. It won't go. This one's in the back. Robinson going to the hoop, the written hour, finger roll, and one. Well, not and one, but the finger roll. Cross right the other way. And they're going to say, Ernie can't call the timeout, maybe before that basket. No, they're going to say, right, they're going to give him the goal and then a timeout. And, and I think if you're Washington, you've got to remember now, that was an easy score, but the Allies, the clock. You don't want the clock to stop. Even if you're in the open court, dribble around, waste some time. So Washington goes on to win this, uh, and we're going on the assumption they do. With 57 seconds left in a 10-point lead, they now go to 4-11 and 11 in the conference. It gives them at least a little bit of a leg up on UCLA looking ahead to the conference tournament, because remember those bottom two teams, whoever they may be, will not go to the conference tournament. Of course, you can look further down the road in terms of getting in. Don't forget the first tiebreaker if they are tied is head to head. So, and Washington still has to travel uh, to Los Angeles to play USC and UCLA. Even if they do beat them, then you got to look and see above them who beat the next team rated highest. And Washington has beat Stanford, and UCLA has defeated Cal. So, the, you know, this could get dicey if you get to the end. And by the way, that's the last conference game of the year is Stanford against. <laughs> California. So it would be kind of interesting to watch it over the time, watching that game to see who'd win. That's right. To see who would go to the tournament. Conroy taking it to the basket. It has a deflected that cross right but Robinson again just runs it down. Yeah, and I, I don't think see see if uh, Oregon decides to foul or not. Looks like they're not gonna do it. Well now they're gonna come out. That's I mean, even if you get a 35, even if you get a violation. I mean, you're not going to if you're the Huskies, but they're doing the right thing. You know, the fans, 
and they deserve it. I thought the Huskies played just a magnificent game. How about Conroy? Will Conroy has been unbelievable. The backcourt of the Huskies really has solidified this victory. Absolutely. Conroy with 15, Allen with 17. Robinson's going to wind up with at least 14. So the backcourt with 46. Probably the biggest win of Lorenzo Romo's career here at Washington. Short, though it may be. And it's always gratifying, you know, when you lose by 25 to a team to come back at home and, and you know, with the crowd, a sellout. And the game is, you know, it's on television. It's a big game. Everybody gets a chance to watch it. And, and you get a, a, a nice win. And I think they're going to get Nate. They're going to leave Nate on the floor. They're going to get Brandon Roy off. Now, see, it's hard to keep him on the floor when he's a 36% free throw shoot. He's got to work on that because he's not going to be on the floor late if he can't make his free throws. Well, the Ducks, I don't think they're going to foul now. They're just going to let it go. Curtis Allen. Well, a steal by Rittenauer. And a jump ball call in the arrow is Oregon's. So Luke Rittenauer saying, I'm not done dancing yet with 11 seconds left. They get it into cross right. Now Johnson. Johnson to the basket. He can't get it. And, a shot and, a and Oregon Berry's got some tough games ahead of him. I mean, they got the, they got the, uh, there goes the finisher. They got the Los Angeles schools coming home to Matt Court. Then they finish in the desert at Arizona, Arizona State. So they got four very tough games coming up. And that's what made this game that much more important, that they uh, went out there, got this one for the Washington Huskies in Oregon. Of course, they wanted to uh, kickstart those four games that you talked about with a win here today in Seattle. Well, a very good win before the home folk here and a great crowd seeing a great basketball game. It's a wrap for us from here in Seattle. For my partner, Dan Belwamini, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.